All right, so what's going on in the real estate market? My name is CJ Trevisano. I've been in the real estate industry for over 13 years, and we're going to look at what it looks like in Northeast Ohio, specifically in Cleveland. If you look all the way to the left-hand side of your screen, that is the amount of houses that, it, that were for sale in 2009 in the light green, and then the dark green is the sold properties. So there's way more houses for sale in 2009 than if we were today. So if you look all the way to the right, which is today in 2023, you see the amount of properties that are for sale versus sold. And it is staggering to say the least of how many properties were for sale in 2009 versus today. So this is the median sales price from 2009 all the way to today. So if you go all the way on the left, the median sales price was around $100,000 in Cleveland, Ohio versus today, it's around $200,000. So literally the prices have almost doubled in 13 years. So here, here's the interesting question. What does it look like in another 13 years? Do prices double again? So if you're buying a house today, and you're gonna sell next year, yeah, you, maybe you don't wanna buy, but if you're gonna buy the house and you're going to live in it for the next 13 years, who's to say that prices aren't gonna double again? So this is months of inventory versus closed sales. So overall, months of inventory is how long would it take for every single house to sell that's on the market if no new houses came for sale? So again, we look all the way to the left in 2009 of how many months of inventory there were. And six months is typically a balanced market. Anything above six months is considered a buyer's market. Anything below six months is a seller's market. So if you look at in 2000, 2009, 10, 11, how many months of inventory there were if no new houses came for sale? It's very staggering. Versus today, you look all the way to the right, I think we're still under two or three months of inventory overall. So if new new houses came for sale, that's how fast everything would sell. Then the, the blue squiggly line is there is the median sales price. So you, look at, you can look at the months of inventory versus the median sales price of how the prices have gone up over time as inventory has decreased. This final graph is sales price versus original list price. So if you look all the way again to the left in 2009, how much, how, this is basically the deal that people were getting. So they were, they were basically getting like 71% of list price. So if a house was listed at $100,000, you could essentially get that house for $71,000. Then as you go up and over to the right, as time goes on, you see it levels off and in, in kind of the, the um, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then in 2020 was when we first started to see the sales price be at 100% of list price. And then as you went up into 2022, it went, it went above list price. So we were getting 101, 102%, 103% of list price. So if the house was listed at $100,000, it means you have to buy it for $103,000. Then we had a slight dip in the beginning and end of last year. And then it raised up again, pretty close to 100% again. So pretty staggering to see over time what that sales price to original list price looked like. So overall, as far as the real estate market goes, in my opinion, it doesn't look like there's going to be a really a big influx of housing inventory coming for sale anytime soon. So who's to say housing prices aren't going to double in the next 13 years? Are prices going to stay the same? I don't think they're going to go down, but maybe they're just going to not go up as much because there's so little inventory. And that's a, a humongous driving factor as far as the real estate market goes.